Hello and welcome. We are here at Public Media Network. For tonight's show, we have our special guest from Project X. Please stick around. We will be right back. Hello, my name is Svetlana Stone and you're watching Spotlight in a Zoo. Thank you for being here. And we are pleased to have Lucy Lucas Valentine, Organizing Committee Co-Chair of Project X and Lawrence Calvert, Outreach Coordinator, here tonight to talk about their project. And thank you so much for joining us tonight. We are very happy to have you. Thank you. And thank eager you. to learn about your project. So I want to start uh, with you, uh, Lucy. Please share your background and how you become involved with Project X. Yes. Um, so I uh, am a longtime community organizer and performing artist, fiber artist. Um, I've been in Kalamazoo about four years. Um, and in 2018, um, I got involved with Project X through our flagship program, which is our educational cohort. Um, and so I was in the cohort of 2018. That was the third cohort of Project X. Um, learned a lot about organizing. Um, and uh, social movements, history, um, praxis, practice and theory, organizing theory. Um, and so from there, um, I got really close with a lot of the people in Project X, um, Jacob, uh, Pani Johnson, and uh, Harmony Durden um, specifically. And um, I kind of worked with them to uh, get into this position at Project X, which used to be called Project Coordinator. And um, over 2019, we did a lot of restructuring, um, which we're still doing, but um, we kind of restructured what our roles look like. Um, and so I'm now co-chair along with Jacob, who's one of the founding members of Project X. So that's kind of how I got involved. Um, but I've always been um, interested in organizing, um, and I've been an organizer for about 10 years now, and I've been been doing performing arts um, for almost as long and um, um, uh, I guess it's a year ago I was saying a couple years it feels like a couple years but a year ago um, I started doing embroidery art um, full-time as well um, so I wear a couple of hats <laughs> that uh, sounds very interesting uh, and I'd like to continue with uh, Lawrence uh, could you please tell us about yourself and what is what is your role um, at this project uh, yeah, uh, my role is, uh, at, uh, in, well, I got into it with, with uh, my friend Jacob. I've known Jacob since we, since way back in the day, back uh, in like since 2002, well, when we both went to high school. And over the years, uh, over this, uh, for the last few years, I've been on a uh, radio, political podcast radio show on Wider with my friend Andy. And... Uh, Jacob kept reaching out to me and telling me that, yo, man, you're really good. Uh, your thoughts are all your your commentary on politics and organizing and things of that nature are really are really good. I think you'll be a great benefit to Project X. And um, in 2000 in 2019, I joined. Um, and as the outreach coordinator, I reach out to. Uh, I help spread our message and the things that we uh, that we like to talk about, which is um, community, uh, which is uh, reaching out to young adults and adults about uh, different ways of getting into uh, other understanding social movements, understanding activism, understanding how we uh, how we as individuals can help uh, benefit our community. And that's what, and Project X is an extension of that. And that's where I come in. I help to basically get people who are interested and who's never done it before, like myself, who's, uh, who may need, uh, may need some education on said things to uh, get their first steps into it. And why do you think it's, it's important, your project, and how um, everyone can get involved? Um, well, if you look at other, um, if we look at, uh, go back in history, when you look at things like SNCC, or you look at uh, things like uh, uh, like the Black Panthers movement, or you look at things like, like MLK and others did, they, when people wanted to organize and people wanted to be a part of a social change, um, 
they had different groups and, and different organizers that, uh, and activists that will come to you and talk to you about, uh, well, these are type, type of the type of the, the ideologies that we that we are uh, we subscribe to. These are different uh, books and literature that you can read. Th these are different ways that you can get informed in the best way for you to want to move forward and how you want to create that type of change that you want to see in the world. And uh, Project X, in my opinion, and from what I've seen us do, we are an extension of that type of legacy, in my opinion. Um, and from from the different uh, from the different classes that we're holding for the cohort, different uh, uh, guest speakers that we have coming and uh, talking about uh, the, uh, a variety of different subjects that people can talk about that infect that uh, that uh, that affect us in our everyday lives. Uh, a lot of people want to be much more proactive, but they don't know where to go. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, yeah. so that's where we step in, and we're like, "Yo, here's some things that might that here's some things that can, uh, here's here's a way that for you to get your to next get step." The right way. Yeah, um, if it comes to if you want to talk about uh, banking, and if it comes to banking or redlining, or if you want to talk about things like uh, gender equality, if you want to talk about um, social, if you want to talk about if we're talking about criminal justice and or like uh, just a myriad of things. A lot of people, we hear about these things and we talk about these things, but we don't know how to get involved or what's the next step. So basically, it's to like it. if you want to change something in a community, yes. you, yes. you teach the young generation how to do that and what sources are available. Yeah. yeah. So young, young adults and yeah, young adults and. Uh, yeah, oh, oh, our target, oh. just, just to add on to that, our target um, audience specifically for the cohort is about 18 to 30, 35. So yeah. we're looking for, I feel like now we use millennials, uh, millennial, like the word as like a catchphrase now for anybody who's yeah. like between 18 and like 30, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's so like, 18 and 35. Right, right, right. So like, I feel like we reach, we want to reach, and that's a, a lot of us. I mean, also, I mean, I the oldest people on our, I think Jacob's the oldest person at like 32. So I, we, we are also our target like audience as well um, so I mean every everything that Lauren said I think is completely on point point. Um, and I I also just think like for for organizers especially in Kalamazoo where we're so inundated with nonprofits to um, that and it, at varying levels of effectiveness um, I feel like Project X is a really great opportunity for people to reach organizing outside of that and to come at it from a grassroots perspective that's not like a really big organization like Black Lives Matter or BYP or like Cosecha or something like that. Like this is like a small, like tight knit, really like sort of family oriented, <laughs> um, funnily enough. Um, organization um, you know we've all a lot of people like Jacob and some of our other community members have like come up together since high school like you know we see each other's kids all the time like it's a really a really tight-knit group that cares about each other um, and cares about each other's growth and so that's that's why it's important for me and I know you asked about how people can get involved and so I wanted to touch on that too um, everyone can uh like come to your project and yes. learn about or yes. yeah so there's a couple ways to get involved um we are working on doing uh launching a, a creative healing initiative that's gonna start um sort of popping off in about march um so like early spring and we're gonna be doing um some events to bring self-care and healing resources to community members in kalamazoo um and so you can look out for that in late march early april um right now uh we are still taking applications um for our 2020 cohort um, that's going to be happening about February March um, and then we are also currently accepting applications um, or interest if you're if you're interested just give us a shout at our email um, for committee members so maybe if you've been through Project X before if you're familiar with us um, we have a pretty deep-seated community uh, I guess awareness of people kind of a lot of people kind of know who we are and so if you've been aware of Project X if you've been organizing in the community for a long time even if you didn't go through our cohort or something like that if you do have a little bit more training and are interested in a leadership position with us we have positions open in outreach and administration in Treasury um, and um, in our research as well so researching myriad of things to support our work um, and 
you can uh, get in touch with us about that, about committee, uh, about committee openings at our email, which is kalamazoo.project.x at gmail.com. Um, and then if you're not an email person, I mean, it's 2020, some people are like, we're past email. Um, you can get at us on Facebook. Um, you can uh, search right in your Facebook search bar, Project X Kalamazoo, and we'll be the first one to pop up. Um, so you can get in touch with us that way or get in touch with us via email if you're interested in any of that. Um, if you're interested in volunteering um, with uh, Project X, that's definitely something we'd love to have as well. Um, all of our committee and cohort positions are stipended, stipended, stipend positions. Um, <laughs> and, um, but we also have a great need for volunteers as well. Um, so those are, those are some of the main ways right now to get involved with us and things we have going on. <laughs> Well, that's wonderful. So they, they can email you that people uh, would like to support you yep. or get involved. They can email you or find you on Facebook. Yes. And I, I believe you also have a nice website. Yes. A lot of information yeah, 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 we do right. have a website. It's a little kind of under construction. What's the name of the website? Um, it's uh, projectxcalamazoo.com. Okay. Um, and that, that's, a, that's a, another way to get in touch with us. We're still kind of working on it. Um, but we're mostly on Facebook, have a big Facebook presence, um, and are working on other social media stuff, too. So, yeah. Thank you so much. We will learn more about uh, X Project right after the short break. And thank you for watching us. We'll stick, um, please stick around. We will be right back. And we know that the butterfly is here, mm -hmm. but I wonder why the train is here. Mm, okay, and the train is another. Frog and toad are friends. Oh, Jeremy, I just love this book. I love it, too. It's seeking life everywhere. Everywhere, right? I always had just a, I always liked the little details of things. Like, what are those football players eating before a game? <laughs> Welcome back to Spotlight in a Zoo. For those of you who just tuned in, we are here at Public Media Network with Lucy Lucas Valentine and Lawrence Calbert from Project S X. Um, thank you for being here with us. And we would like to learn more about your project and activities you support. Uh, and I have, I'm very curious about how you even become with this idea of having Project X. Yeah, that's uh, definitely, um, yeah. I, I, I've been thinking that. <laughs> um, well, well, Jacob. Jacob was the initi initially the one that came up with. And uh, who is it, Jacob? Yeah. So Jacob Honey Johnson is the c other co-chair of okay. our organizing committee. So he works directly with me to manage our organizing committee. He and a lot of the uh, previous um, committee members from 2018, so like Jacquees Robertson, Harmony Durden, um, and some other amazing people, go all the way back to the founding of Project X in in 2016. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Let's speak about the idea. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and, the, and the whole idea that. Um, we always talk. You always hear people talk about uh, be the change that you want that you want in the right. world, right? And um, yeah, we like and we stand in sol in solidarity with other groups like Black Lives Matter and Cosecha, and and um, we we want we basically want to do our part to help create change as well. That's the whole. That's the whole. Um, that's the whole idea of it. Like you know, we see other things like the Sunrise Movement and other things that um, that has happened. You know, throughout our country, throughout our country, and a lot of times we're like, yeah, we're just gonna go to the protest, and, mm -hmm. or right. or yeah, we're just gonna we're just gonna go to the protest, or yeah, we're just gonna go do this thing, and it's like, I don't know what else I'm supposed to do after that, mm -hmm. and like, exactly. or or I don't, or I I I'm really not educated on said topic that I, wanna I want to change something, but I don't know how. Right, yeah. right. You know what I'm saying? It, it's, it's a horrible feeling to go to a march and not and not understand why you're marching or the subject that you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, and that's where at, uh, Project, X, Project X steps in and we're like, yo, if you want to, if you want to take, for example, if we're, uh, take, for example, environmental justice, like talk about climate change. Um, 
Kalamazoo has definitely seen, Kalamazoo and our sister cities have definitely seen, our sister and brother cities have definitely seen uh, a number of tragedies over over the years. If we're talking about Flint, or we're talking about the PFOS problem that's out in Parchment, flooding. or the flooding that's in our city. Um, and talking about how those things affect our communities, you know, poor, disenfranchised communities, communities of color, um, and understanding uh, how we can, and from a organ from a organizing and activist perspective, uh, affect our government and our communities to fix or influence said problem to uh, to fix that problem that's happening, and some things are are uh, some things we have to advocate for to our representatives, mm -hmm. and we have to talk to our representatives to say, yo, you need to be pushing these type of agendas. Mm -hmm. Some things are uh, are people, more people, just people, the, power, people, just, just people, people power. getting together, right? And, that's and that, doing it, right? And that's the other, and that's the other aspect of it. This um, is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what. So and that's the that's, that's the space where we. Uh, we uh, take we a look at this idea yeah. about X project that you would um, offer this platform to the young people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so that's uh, so when you talk about when you see a need, you know, you can you could be nihilistic and be like, oh well, there's nothing we can do about it, or you can be like, no, we're going to do something about it, and we need, well, and we're going to we're going to make we're going to make this change, you know. So and that's where we are. Where we're like, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get together and organize and educate so that we can make change. Yeah, and I think there's not as much out there right now in terms of, I guess, back end. You could say collectives that are like, we're gonna do the work to get people together, right? So there's like activating people and there's getting people to be in one place, like at a protest or a march or whatever. And then there's like the organize there's the organizing where you organize people and train them and educate them and educate yourselves to like reach a common goal there's like things like power mapping where you think about where your resources are and what those resources have there's um there's all these different ways to strategically organize and do activism. And I think that's something I personally don't see a whole lot of. I see a lot of like, let's get in the streets and let's, you know, um, let's put signs up and let's get angry and let's do all this stuff, which I am all for, believe you me. <laughs> I am all for, if you know me, I am a big rah, 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 let's get angry and in the streets kind of person. And at the same time, as like, and also as a person who comes from a youth development background, among other things, and our motto is, you know, shout out to kidnap on this plan do reflect ypqa type stuff um youth quality models you know my thought is how can we get people together to take all of their energy and channel it and i think that's the thing that project x strives to do um mainly 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 through the cohort yeah and um yeah that sounds very um very interesting um do you collaborate with anyone, and do you have community partnerships? Uh, yeah, we um, we are we uh, we uh, have worked with uh, TRHT uh, Truth Racial he Truth uh, Racial I, Healing and Transformation. I, I keep it's messing. It's really I, long. I keep messing up their acronym. I'm so sorry. It's uh, really long. I'm, I'm so sorry, y'all. I love y'all, and I really keep messing up y'all acronym. I'm so sorry. It's really long. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> okay. Yeah, like, so we've, we've done work with them. We know we're, it's it's kind of funny. We're like a family-based community, but we're also like by accident completely a really artist-based community. So a lot of the people on, on our committee are artists as well, singers and dancers and all types of all types of things. So we're really based in, in the arts as well and have a lot of partnerships with other artists in Kalamazoo. Mm -hmm. um, we are looking at doing some more arts partnership in in, in the future, but we have worked with TRHT before. We've done Urban Democracy Feast. Um, our biggest partnership is Erase, um, who yeah. works with us as our fiduciary. Um, and so we are at Erase Trainings kind of a lot and, yeah, yeah. Um, and also, provide that uh, also, to our cohort members. And also shout out to Young Kings and Queens. Uh, yeah. uh, we, we, we heard about this organization, yes, yes, yeah, they visited us. Queens. Yes, uh, and and you know, everyone who's about amazing, yeah, yeah. everyone who's about um, 
about making sure my community that's, that's yeah really we important. all have our we all have our like direct resources like Lawrence has a lot of like community resources on the north side like I have a lot of connects with other, a lot of nonprofit folks like um, one of our committee members Jessica runs her own label with her band last gas shout out to last gas shout out last um, <laughs> you know uh, Jacob he works uh, with um, folks coming um, what do they call it re-entering in society after being incarcerated and has a lot of uh, community resources around that and we all kind of put that together um, and we, we reach we reach pretty far. <laughs> Thank you and um, over the next year what is the hope and vision for your project? Mm, big question. That is a good question. That's a big question. So our mission, our mission and vision actually is like super duper simple. We as a whole believe that systems of oppression are fatal to everybody. And so because of that, we have things like the cohort that we invest in. And we're investing in young adults. We're investing um, in rising leaders. That's our sort of flagship concept. Um, but we're also like branching out and I think that's the biggest thing that we're gonna do this year. So we're looking at doing more programming, we're looking at doing more partnerships and doing more events um, and just being on the radar like physically <laughs> a bit more. Um, I know there's a lot of people that know about us and, I, and at the same time, I also think there's more ways that we can show up in community. Um, you know, things like last year, uh, we were just on Andy Argo's radio show that Lawrence does, Hood Rat Strategist, um, and he was talking about how in the polar vortex last year, like activists and organizers were getting together to like make sure that folks had shelter in Kalamazoo. Things like that is stuff that we wanna get into. We want to, I feel like we have the capacity and the resources to be, um, and on the ground force that is there to support community members when they need it for things like that. But also just, you know, if something simpler than that, like cleaning up a neighborhood or like something, something like that. But I, I think that's our biggest, our biggest um, thing is to, is to branch out and live out our values a little bit more and connect in a more, in a more intersectional way. Um, Project X has, n is, really, really has the opportunity to become more intersectional as an organization in terms of who's involved with our organization, but also in terms of where we show up and the resources that we give to people. Um, so there's a lot, there's a lot from Project X that comes from like black radical traditions and we love that and we're very pro black. And at the same time, we're also pro brown and pro trans and pro LGBTQ and pro working class and working poor and pro immigrants and pro indigenous and pro everybody that exists in a marginalized space. And we want to we want to zero in on that in a more intersectional way. So that's that's what I would say. I don't know. I want to know what you would say because I feel like I mean, that's that. <laughs> if you asked any one of us, it would be a different answer. I, I mean. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty much, I'm, I pretty much co-sign everything you said, uh, more or less. I mean, you pretty much hit the nail on the head. Everything I was gonna say. But what would you like to see happen? Like, what you know, if you had well, your little PF dream. <laughs> what What I would like, okay, me person, uh, me personally, what I'm hoping for and what I expect is uh, a lot of the, a lot of the, one of the main things that we're doing is a lot of classes. So, one of the classes like th there's different classes talking about different uh different issues there's one uh based on uh, uh criminal justice one based on uh just racism and uh a socialized class system if you've ever read books like the new jim crow and things like that nature uh if there's a uh, there's cl uh, classes talking about uh gender there's class there's classes talking about uh, food and uh, and like talking about like food deserts and banking deserts, pharmacy deserts and things of that nature, and um, me personally, these are a lot of these are a lot of uh, these are a lot of things that I've talked about on on the show, which you referenced on um, I'm, I co-host on uh, my friend Andy Argo's show every Wednesday at six o'clock. Shameless plug, um, <laughs> but uh, it, it's one thing to talk about an issue all the time and to be educated on an issue, it's another thing to actually put some skin on the game and move forward on trying Action. to fix said, fix said issue. Mm -hmm. And again, as, as much as, as, much as, uh, as I, as my job is to get the narrative out there and get, and get, uh, and get the word out there about what we're doing, about the classes that you are also, that you will also, if you are going to participate in, will be, uh, will be getting paid for your time. 
Um, there's a stipend for those who are also a part of the classes. So um, not to not to say that's an incentive. We want, we want you to come and get educated. But uh, it's I'm excited to see what what happens next after that. And and the next movement that we can do and next uh, next moment and movement that we can do to be a part of to create a, a better to create a a uh, more uh, constructive change. Like for example, in Kalamazoo, we have a we have a homeless issue. Remember, in last year, uh, speaking on the reference, uh, on the reference, the whole polar polar vortex. Uh, Andy, Jacob, and a, and a bunch of our other friends and, and people I know, you know, we were, they were at the Douglas, making sure that uh, people didn't freeze. But also, a, a staggering statistic that most people don't know: forty-five percent of most people who are homeless have full-time jobs. Yeah. Hmm. So, uh, so it and it's and it's not like we don't have space for them to have a uh, to have a have a home. Martin Luther King talked about this back in uh, in in uh, in fifties and sixties that if we're going to if we're talking if we're going to talk about uh, fixing our country and fixing our community then then having working class poor and having people who are working a full time job but they can't even have a place to stay yeah. is a problem. Yeah, so that's an, that's yeah. uh, that's one of the issues that I think we want to get more into that we that we see that we see happening. But action is definitely another yeah. thing. I would co-sign that. Yeah. And I just want to say thank you for coming and um, sharing about your project, wonderful project. I, I wish uh, like success and all your dreams that you have envisioned. Thank you so much. Come yeah. through. And um, is there anything else uh, you would like to share that we might have missed? Um, yeah, just uh, I'll throw out our contact information again. Sure, yeah. um, you can search us on Facebook, Project X Kalamazoo, and our email if you're interested in getting in, involved with cohort or being on our committee or just volunteering um, or just want to know more stuff. Our email again is kalamazoo.project.x at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, this concludes this month's edition of Spotlight in a Zoo. If you would like to learn more about our guest, please check this information below. And if you know someone or would like to be on our show, please contact to Public Media Network. And thank you for being with us tonight. And see you next time. Mm -hmm.